Hey y'all, Tim here from Threefold Farm. I wanted to share a video with y'all that a customer sent us giving us a tour of his climate battery greenhouse. Mark Epstein from Flow Farm in North Carolina was one of our first customers at Atmos Greenhouse Systems. And it was awesome to see his climate battery greenhouse three years in and thriving. I'm gonna put the full unabridged video here so that you can hear directly from his experience. And so without further delay, here's Mark Epstein from Flow Farm. Hello, this is Mark Epstein here at Flow Farm in uh, Aberdeen, North Carolina. We're in the Sand Hills of North Carolina. It's February 2025 and I'm going to do a short video here talking about our climate battery underneath the high tunnel um, and uh, talk about the operations and the installation. Uh, it's a gorgeous day here. It's blue skies. It's uh, over, it got over 70 degrees today. Um, but uh, like a week and a half ago or two weeks ago, it was down at 11 degrees overnight. So um, this is the kind of days here where we get to store a lot of extra heat in the soil underneath the high tunnel uh, so that we can make it through those cold nights. All right, I'm going to turn the video here. All right, so this is our high tunnel. It's uh, 36 uh, feet by 96 feet. And uh, uh, we installed, uh, we did the construction about four years ago uh, and uh, started the excavation. It took us a while to build it. Uh, working with Tim Clymer was fabulous uh, uh, on the climate battery. And we're gonna go inside. Right now the fans are still running. Uh, the climate battery fans uh, blowing uh, warm air underground. So it's gonna be a little bit of noisy in here. So this is our high tunnel. And um, we right now have uh, three rows of cover crops over here. We have one row here that I put in a miscellaneous mixture of food and another cover crop uh, row here. But this is our high tunnel. It's absolutely gorgeous and wonderful and beautiful. If we look over here on the north side, you see there's a fan there. And this fan is right now blowing about 75 degree air down underground. And so that air is uh, blowing down underground through a network of pipes. There are four fans on the north side of the high tunnel. So there's uh, the first one that we've seen. This pair of fans here, one of them is partnered with the first fan we saw. And those two uh, collectively provide the input air down into the climate battery for half of the high tunnel. And then there's another fan here and there is another fan down at this end. It's, win uh, it's winter time here. Uh, we're not growing uh, all of our usual food over winter. Most of our attention is on building soil. But I'm gonna give you kind of an overview of the uh, climate battery and what we're doing inside here. When we were designing our high tunnel, our key uh, decision making uh, was really about how do we keep it warm over the winter? And we didn't want to do the propane and all of that stuff. And so we learned about the climate battery and did our, our consultation with Tim and uh, worked with him on the designs and it was a great process. Um, when you look at the high tunnel here, our primary goals were we wanted to have a uh, shelf for nursery operations. We wanted to grow directly in the soil 12 months of the year. And we figured if we're keeping it warm, we might as well have some tropicals. So for us, that means we have six citrus trees, we have two avocado trees, and we have a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, pineapples. Um, these all got into the ground less than three years ago and they were you know, very small at that time and <laughs> they've done really great in here. We also have four circulating fans up top uh, that run in a racetrack uh, formation and we keep them going uh, most of the time as well. So how does the climate battery work? Well. I can tell you uh, this year has been a little bit more complex than the first few years and so the first two winters and each winter we learned some new things. The main points that made it harder this winter were that our double layer plastic is pretending it's single layer plastic this year because there was a little bit of shredding down at the end by some uh, big birds uh, and um, we didn't really get it sealed up very well, so it doesn't hold pressure. So I decided this winter, let's pretend we have single layer plastic and see how the climate battery does. The second thing is that when you're sealing your high tunnel or rolling down the walls for the winter, sometimes we, we did a lot of stuff to try and get it tight. Sometimes the walls roll down and they're really tight there. There's almost no leakage, but there's other places where there is leakage. And so I think the amount of leakage is manageable uh, with some effort. 
and more leakage is more uh, transition of the outside temperature inside. When we got down to 11 degrees the other night, I was pretty uh, worried. Uh, would we stay above 35, which is my goal inside? Uh, we have no uh, particular source of supplemental heat that we've ever uh, done, so I figured we'll see what happens. And the uh, climate battery did great. In rough numbers, when we're blowing warm air down and it's going through the network of pipes, um, we get somewhere around 12 and sometimes as high as 15 degrees differential for the air that's coming up. So let's go and look at the, well first let's notice the, this is a, a grapefruit tree that's doing really wonderful. Um, it's actually a variety it's called Mellow Gold. It's a, a, a blend or a mixture between a pomelo and a grapefruit. This is a, an Italian variety of an orange called a Travita. Absolutely delicious. So these trees are only three years old now, or three years in the ground, and they were one year when I uh, got them. They were really just sticks. And they've done great. We had uh, um, uh, one flower on the grapefruit this year that we harvested. We had gorgeous. We had one flower on the, t on the orange that we harvested, gorgeous. Um, this is a lemon tree, um, and uh, uh, he's doing uh, great. Uh, we had one lemon, uh, it's still growing. There it is. This, by the way, is a volunteer leftover uh, artichoke. Artichokes don't actually do very well temperature-wise, uh, but this guy just keeps coming back. But the trees are getting so big that he's, uh, he's really not going to produce. This is an avocado tree. It is just magnificent. Again, just three years old. Um, the trunk, look at all of this, and there's about a zillion little flowers getting ready to start. In the, oh, let's look at the high tunnel, the climate battery. So we put uh, on our riser, this is our exhaust riser, uh, we put this little grid on top of it so nobody would drop stuff in. And you can see on top, on the bottom of the grid, I have a sensor push uh, that does the measurements of the temperatures. I actually have eight sensor pushes at different points around the high tunnel and one outside so I can watch and see what all the temperatures are. But this is what it looks like down inside the high tunnel. My hair is blowing out. So those are the pipes that are two feet underground. There's also pipes at four feet underground, six feet underground, and eight feet underground. We went down uh, about nine feet underground, if I remember, and we did a little V uh, you know, cut in the lowest floor where there was some um, uh, clay down there. And we just did a, a groove uh, with some extra piping and a little bit of gravel so that we wouldn't have any water build up at the bottom. I don't know that it, we would have ever needed that as a problem, but we did go down a little bit further. Then we put in each of the pipes, we laid them out, we followed uh, Tim's instructions, and we also you know, really, really didn't know what we were doing as far as backfilling and making sure we didn't crush the pipes, but we were very careful and everything worked great. It was a lot of dirt to move. We're in the sand hills and we're a mixture of uh, sand and, uh, and um, clay, but that was a lot of dirt to move. 100 uh, feet or so, 110 feet by, I guess about 45 feet. So when we were excavating, we were building uh, mountains of the Himalayas off to the side and uh, we had to have um, a ramp to get up uh, with the excavator. And then after we were uh, filling it back in, we kept coming in and, and putting down all the pipes at each layer, getting them all uh, drilled into the riser pipes, and then uh, carefully uh, uh, backfilling on top of them so that they were uh, well supported before we drove on them, and then backfilled more and then backfilled more. It was a long process. We were not expert at this. So uh, if you're gonna do a high tunnel, you may wanna make sure that you have a good excavator and you know what you're doing. Uh, we planted five different varieties of pineapples. Some have done better than others in the sense of, like these guys here, haven't flowered yet. Um, it's a different variety. Um, these over here have done fantastic. Uh, those of you who actually know how to grow pineapples are going to tell me that I am not thinning out as I'm supposed to. There's a, a pineapple in there. So I just kind of let it go, but we have all of these pops and slips, and I sometimes I break them off and I'll uh, uh, root them and uh, that gives us more uh, pineapple plants, but I don't have any place to put them inside the high tunnel. This is all the space that I've allocated for them. So maybe we'll get into the pineapple plant business. But these guys are a solid four feet tall, this variety. Um, this is my favorite variety. I'll have to look up the name, sorry about that. But I got these from uh, a nursery in Florida. This guy is uh, probably another uh, two months and then he'll be ready to harvest. So these are our pineapples, doing great. Um, Another variety of avocado. Here's a lime tree. 
and he's got uh, he had five flowers this year so this is the first year that we've gotten citrus um, uh, off of most of the trees um, this is um, a uh, pixie tangerine and we had three gorgeous huge pixies this year and so they're all doing great uh, this last one is a uh, uh, kumquat and this guy produced like 200 fruit this year just look at that um, so this is up against the, the wall and I know that the citrus can handle some cold uh, but you know we really do try and keep it above 35 so when we're setting our low and high temperatures when you set the low temperature, if you set it lower, it gets a little bit cold and you wind up getting a sawtooth pattern at the bottom on the, the dual stage thermostat. So when it gets below whatever you set your threshold on, the fans come on, it's blowing cold air down underground, it comes up warm. How warm? It comes up a solid 10 to 12 degrees warmer. It gets circulated around and then eventually we hit the differential of a few degrees and then the fans go off. And then they come back on again as it, if it's uh, particularly cold outside. And so we get that sawtooth pattern overnight. If you set your low thermostat temperature too high, then you're gonna wind up uh, withdrawing more heat. And you can get to a situation where you're withdrawing so much heat that it actually never can make the two or three degree uh, or four degree uh, differential, whatever I have it set on the low side, uh, to turn off the fans. So, uh, in the early part of the winter, we keep our low temperature in here 40. As it was getting really cold outside, especially down to 11, I went all the way down to 33 and a half. Um, and my temperature uh, for turning on and off the fans is on the back wall near the electric panel. And so uh, at the exhaust fans, and in particular at the middle, in the center, we did stay above 35, even though it got down to 11 outside. We're not anywhere near as cold as up in Pennsylvania where Tim is. Uh, we don't get snow very much. But I think we've demonstrated this year that with some management of adjusting the low temperature and the uh, high temperature, uh, we can actually probably operate without uh, uh, double plastic. However, if we got down to single digits or even down to zero degrees, we may uh, find that that doesn't work uh, without the double plastic. Um, on the high temperature, uh, I t right now I have it set at a low temperature of 37 and a half and a high temperature of 72 and a half. So that's a 35 degree spread. Uh, sometimes we're at 37 and a half or 40 degree spread. Um, and uh, these kinds of rules of thumb, I know Tim's got a lot of guidance on that and you'll learn as you go. So to summarize, this is our high tunnel. Uh, it's really one of the greatest things that we did uh, was to put in the climate battery. And it's a lot of fun and everybody that comes to the farm is completely uh, excited about uh, the high tunnel and the climate battery. And it's really great when we have uh, the science kids coming or even the college uh, students coming. Um, they really are excited about this, this part of the project. So uh, thanks uh, Tim uh, for all of your guidance here. And that tells you a bit of the story of our high tunnel. Uh, thanks, bye. And welcome back. Hope you all enjoyed hearing from Mark and thanks again to him and Flow Farm for sharing his experiences with their climate battery greenhouse. Until next time, God bless and thanks y'all.